is Demi Lovato. Amazing. You're listening to Authenticity Radio. Authenticity Radio with Slade Suter. Now, your host, who has the hospitality of a fat and jolly innkeeper, Slade Suter. Hey, uh, welcome. Grab a seat anywhere. No, we don't have any menus. The only thing we have today is the freedom to express who you truly are. We call it Authenticity Radio. You'll like it, don't worry. Let me go grab the host. He's got the hospitality of a fat and jolly innkeeper. <laughs> He's a good guy. Slade Suter. Thank you so much for joining us today, and welcome to today's program. This is Slade Suter. We are about to give ourselves license to stereotype. We're going to be taking a look at the Japanese culture, the Japanese people, and to get an insight of the Japanese mindset. And who better to do this than my great friend, Fu Sato, from Japan, of course. So, Fu, welcome to Authenticity Radio. Wow, Slade, thank you for inviting me to your program. <laughs> I, it's so nice to finally have you here. Uh, for our listeners, uh, Fu Fu, and, oh, I'm sorry, Fu Fu, can I use your nickname? Of oh, course, oh, sure, sure. Yeah, please do. <laughs> thank you, Fu Fu. And uh, for, for our listeners, the last time that Fiu Fiu was actually in Barcelona, we were uh, trying to squeeze in a last-minute interview before he actually took off to the airport, and um, it just didn't work. He, uh, so this has been a long-awaited interview. I'm very, very thankful that you're here today, Fiu. Yeah, my pleasure. And finally... Finally, <laughs> I come back. <laughs> and we'll take full advantage of this opportunity. Because we are going to be talking about stereotypes of the Japanese people, and we're going to give ourselves full permission to do so, uh, because recognizing that stereotypes come from a story that's incomplete. It's always incomplete. But it happens to be that there's enough of the story going around that creates a stereotype in the first place. Mm, but when you take a look at the big picture, uh, the, uh, it, there's many, many other stories that will contradict this story as well. And so that's why a stereotype is always going to be incorrect when you use it in the absolute form. However, what we're going to do is to go and investigate the Japanese mindset. And uh, to do so, we're going to start with a list that I found um, on the Internet uh, generated by many foreigners uh, that had a perspective of the Japanese people. So here's the list. Japanese people are polite. They are punctual. They are kind. They are hardworking. They are respectful. They are shy. They are intelligent. They are grouping. They are formal. And they are clean. So, Fiu Fiu, what do you think about this list? Uh, I say uh, that's true. (laughs) (laughs) Well, there you go. Thank you for joining us on Authenticity Radio. (laughs) Yes. um, When I was listening to your list, uh, each word really... um, yeah, sounds correct to me from one perspective. Of, of course, are uh, not all Japanese are like that, but actually it's a uh, sort of tendency we Japanese have in common. Okay, so, 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 so what, do, do, you, do you think that there is a cultural expectation 
Uh, the culture itself expects a Japanese person to embody and to show these qualities that that, that I just listed. Mm, yes, yes, yes. You can you can expect Japanese to be Japanese people to be like that. Okay, few few. Um, yeah. <laughs> You know, respect is so huge in the Japanese culture. It seems like it's expected everywhere and everyone to be respectful with inside the culture. So, so what would happen if I were a Japanese man and I started acting out in a very non-respectful, unrespectful way in my mannerisms, in my body language, and in, in my in the way that I um, interacted with people in public? What could I expect the culture uh, to do if I were a very disrespectful man as a Japanese man? Mm. First, uh, you can not do your business. Okay, so I, I, would, I would hurt my business opportunities. Yes, yeah. And also, pe people will see you as a weirdo. <laughs> so so yeah. so so what would happen if, if people see me as a weirdo? Yeah, if if you are a kind of artist or musician, it will be allowed. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. May, uh, if you are talented artist or musician, <laughs> it's probably allowed. <laughs> oh, he's an artist. Oh, I get it. So okay. So 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 I, if I'm an artist, I'm given. A special latitude of behavior. I, I have uh, more leeway if I'm an artist. Yeah. So may maybe it's not about only being disrespectful, but um, if you do some strange things um, out of the common sense, yeah, like Taro Okamoto, a worldly renowned artist, mm -hmm. yeah, it's okay with him. With him, but yeah, not with everybody. <laughs> okay, so, so so let's imagine that I'm not famous and I'm an ordinary person, and I do act outside all the parameters, all of the expected parameters of what is expected me as a of a Japanese person. What can I expect? Especially in the traditional society, uh, like a uh, village remote f from the Tokyo. Mm -hmm. um, people will neglect you. Neglect. Yeah. Okay. Or ig ignore you. Okay, that's a, that's interesting. So, 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 what does that mean when a society starts to ignore and shun uh, individual? Is it an insult? Yeah, it's it's yes, it's an insult, and also. Um, um, you you cannot live without the help of your neighbors in that traditional society. Uh, like uh, what can I say? Um, like in the community. Um, yeah, it's it's a community matter. You will uh, exchange uh, some necessities uh, to your neighbors, and sometimes uh, you you have to. Uh, you need some hands from your neighbors to do farming mm -hmm. or other times uh, you have to do the wedding or funeral with your neighbors so it, it's a community matter and once you are shunned or you are uh, ignored by your neighbors you are you you just cannot live in that community. Okay, so so as a consequence of being disrespectful on a continual basis, I'm going to be losing the support uh, structure of the small uh, village. In in other words, yes, that that's the traditional way of living, and uh, of course, uh, in a big city like Tokyo, mm -hmm. uh, we are losing that kind of kind of tradition. But still, uh, it's it's uh, one of our DNAs, mm -hmm. and so we we cannot help doing or we cannot help behaving in a respectful way. 
Yeah, I, I agree with you. I mean, I was in Tokyo, and I just have a, a little small sample in that huge city. It's a gigantic city. But my experience is is that I was greeted so often by so many people I just didn't know. They acknowledged my presence, and that was very different than Barcelona. Barcelona's a nice city. I'm not saying it's not. However, the cultural greeting is very, very distinct in, in Japan, in, in Tokyo, even. Here's another stereotype I'll throw at you. Uh, do foreigners have to be careful with invitations from a Japanese person? Uh, you know, for example, if you're invited over to a house, you know, are, are you really invited over to the house or do you have to kind of second guess this uh, uh, or is it just a polite gesture? Mm. Okay, so let me start with another stereotyped story. Okay. Um, it, it is said, actually, I have never experienced that personally, mm -hmm. but it is said that in Kyoto, uh, if someone someone is inviting you, saying that, uh, please eat rice with green tea mm -hmm. at my house. Please eat rice with green tea at my house, which means beat it. <laughs> 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 so, so, so tell me more about this. Why, if I receive an invitation to eat uh, rice with green tree, tea, why, why is that uh, an invitation to, to beat it? Yeah, I, I, I don't know where it originally come from, but um, yes, uh, the rice with green tea is a sort of a, a small dish, traditional dish in Japan. And and um, you usually would not serve this dish to other people. Uh, it's just a family dish or something. <laughs> so th this is a kind kind of symbolic episode, I think. Okay. A kind of expression um, connotates other meaning. In, in the specific situation. Hmm. Uh, so we call it highly contextual. So I, 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 I'm, I'm not sure if, if I can express it correctly or not, but you have to guess by what they are saying what they really mean. Okay. So it's, it's kind of, you, you've been slighted. And an intelligent person would be able to understand that. Yeah. Okay. That, that's the, the basic, uh, basic structure of traditional Japanese way of communicating. Okay. So, so few, few, what advice would you give foreigners? Uh, how best to conduct ourselves going into your culture, going into the Japanese culture as we go visit? What would how how best could we make our approach and not step into situations that we don't want to be in or step onto toes and and this type of thing? Okay, the first thing I I would recommend is to observe, experiment, and observe. Okay. So maybe you you can try a small thing and. Observe what will happen, and you know um, if it's okay with that specific person or not. Mm -hmm. Actually, the, uh, that kind of trend or the tradition is uh, is sort of disappearing, in, especially in the big city. Mm -hmm. So you can be more direct to people in a big city uh, than in the countryside. Okay, so out in the countryside, I'll, I'll, I'll experience a higher formal structure and expectations uh, than in the city. Oh, wow, great way of saying that. Wow, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Actually, I, I, I don't know how to, how to 
explain Japanese culture. It's really tough. <laughs> it's really tough to explain it <laughs>、um, with with my English. <laughs> anyway. Wow, your 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 English is great, Fiu Fiu. Don't worry.、Uh, here here's another thing: is can can you give us an insight、um, in regards to the Western concept of of dolphins and whales and、uh, the Japanese diet? Okay,、uh, about dolphin and whale pro- problem,、uh, let's divide the Japanese people into three groups. Okay. One group is the majority, most people. They do not care so much about whales.、Mm-hmm. What I, what I mean is, they don't eat so much whale, and they just don't care. Okay. Yeah. And in the second group,、uh, there are some regions or areas、uh, where people traditionally、uh, catch whales and eat. Whale meat on daily basis, yeah. But there are not so many areas.、Uh, I know some of them, and they they really eat whales、uh, like a breakfast and dinner. Oh, they do. Okay. Yeah. So this would be like、uh, fishing villages, and、uh, the population yes, is is much、yes. smaller. So much smaller. And the, the third group is、uh, what can I say? Uh, uh, professional whale catching industry.、Mm-hmm. I think they are the one who has conflicts、uh, about non whale catching countries.、Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know they eat whale or not, but they need to do that. For the business, okay, and so the conflict seems to come from the vested interest of catching whales、uh, because of the livelihood of of the industry itself. And、uh, let me be clear about my standpoint.、Mm-hmm. And、uh, I myself personally like whale meat.、Mm-hmm. I'd like to、uh, allow the traditional people catch whale because. That's their tradition.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, recently uh, I'm not thinking of eating whale meat because we don't need to.、Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like a conscious decision. Yes. Okay. Well, I respect that a lot of you, few few. And, and speaking of which, if if if、uh, you have a contrary. Opinion in J- in Japan,、uh, are you well received? Is your voice readily heard, or is there、uh, a pressure to keep quiet and to go along with the flow in whatever subject? Yeah, but but uh, actually, yeah, yeah. The the current is changing. I feel because maybe、uh, one year or two years ago. We had a big demonstration、uh, for. I think it's about、uh, stopping the nuclear plants. Yeah, it's about、uh, ab- abolishing the nuclear plants, and、uh, there were a、uh, huge amount of people uh, coming to uh, in front of uh, uh, the Parliament House. I think it's more than. Twenty thousand or、uh, or fifty thousand. I don't remember exactly, but anyway, that was huge, and it had not happened before. So it's a kind of showing our standing point, and and it shows、uh, the Japanese people are changing, and however. Uh, there are there are lots more people who have not changed、mm-hmm. because the Liberal Democratic Party won the last election and the Prime Minister Abe from the Liberal Democratic Party 
uh, and they are, they have been uh, they have been in the major power of the politics after the World War Two for mm-hmm. a long time, which shows many Japanese people do not want to change. That's my perspective. But okay, so so even though there is a large uh, part of the population resistant to change. Uh, this new showing of solidarity and in joining your voice is is new. That's uh, that's mm-hmm. very powerful. Thank you very yeah. very much for sharing this. Now, how about um, the wacky television? Uh, when when I was there last, yes. when I was there the last time, I couldn't sleep, and so I turned on TV. And what I saw was channel after channel, but a lot of channels uh, with this. Crazy, wacky television, uh, pies in the faces, uh, people dressing up, dancing crazy, and just kind of crazy, crazy, crazy. Uh, that, that, that's, that's what I remember. Mm. What about this wacky television? Can, can you tell me about this? No. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't see any fun part about, about them. The the slapstick comedians uh, on on the trend. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know much of them, uh, and w- sometimes I see them on the TV program, and I, I I do not understand at all why they are funny. <laughs> but lots lots of young people laugh when they do something. <laughs> I just don't know why. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why either. But but you know what? Perhaps because there's so many expectations and norms that you have that you're expected to follow, and uh, the entertainment industry is one way just to kind of let loose and go crazy. What, what, what do you think of that? Uh, it, it makes sense to me. And uh, now I'm looking up for something to explain that. Mm. Um, there is a famous concept about Japanese culture mm-hmm. in cultural anthropology. And mm. uh, it's kind of contrast between sacred and secular, S E C U L A R. So, Japanese people divide uh, the occasions into two, sacred and secular. And secular. Secular, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, in the, it, it's, a, it's a matter of TPO, time, place, and occasion. So, if you think it's sacred time, place, and occasion... You behave respectful and well-mannered, or something like that. But once you think it's a secular, mm-hmm. I can pronounce it well. So, so secular is perfect. Good job. Yeah, secular. Mm-hmm. Yes, secular uh, time and, and place and occasion. Uh, you can behave freely. Let's say, um, yes, some foreign workshop leaders uh, come to Japan and hold a workshop seeing Japanese people wow you are really so shy and silent and but but you are really eager to learn uh, oh that's Japanese but when they uh, join the party at night they call Japanese wow it's nighttime Japanese Ah, does that make sense? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. It, it, it's, there seems to be two uh, distinct modes of being, uh, and and this is also in my experience that the the Japanese uh, norms and expectations of values uh, throughout the day to day of how you are to interact is is one of these occasions, and then. Uh, there seems to be also a cultural mm, acceptance that once it's time to let down your hair, 
uh, people are really allowing themselves to express themselves very freely. <laughs> and, 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 and if you put them side by side, it seems very contrasting. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, uh, I I mistook uh, the two uh, the opposite. Secular is the normal time, so uh, should be should be uh, serious and respectful. And in the sacred time, it's kind of festival. Ah, okay. So you so you can behave um, freely. And not uh, not binded by the traditions. Okay, so 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 the sacred time is a time where the Japanese individual, the Japanese person, will feel uh, free uh, to express themselves. Yeah. So when I see the expressive Japanese people in the evening letting their hair down and expressing themselves, yeah. then I would say that these people are entering their sacred zone. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yeah, so, sort of, I think. And also, uh, you, uh, you use the word cultural norm. That's a good expression. Cultural norm. That's a good expression, I think. Because um, I think Japanese people are role-oriented people. Role-oriented, In okay. Every, yeah, yeah role-oriented people. Uh, what I mean by that is in any specific situation, what first comes to us is what kind of role I am taking in this specific situation. Hmm. So let me give you an example that it's also about a workshop. I was in a workshop as assistant, mm -hmm. and there, there are two more people as assistants, and all are Japanese. And the workshop leaders are uh, Americans. Mm -hmm. And we are in the back of the room and watching the leaders uh, leaders were doing uh, to the participants and at one moment uh, they moved to the back of the room for some reason and at the moment when they started to move all the three assistants moved from the back side to the front side without any sign automatically at the same timing hmm. because we automatically thought that we should not be focused because we were assistants so you're striking a balance yes because that's our role and after we did it uh, automatically I was aware of that, and I asked my colleagues, assistants, why did you do that? They said, oh, it was just unconscious. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay, so it would be safe to say that uh, one of the cultural norms for the Japanese people is to constantly be seeking for harmony and balance. Yeah, harmony and balance uh, usually come, comes first. Uh, for most Japanese. Um, however, it's also unconscious, I think. So, yeah, let's imagine uh, we're having a meeting among Japanese people. Mm -hmm. Unconsciously, the first thing we are thinking of is what role I am taking in this meeting. Am I a chair? Yeah, am I a chairperson? Or am I just a member? Or uh, am I uh, junior? Or am I senior? In what time, uh, uh, in what occasion, or at what timing should I say this or that? Or is this allowed to say this or not? Or something like that. <laughs> That's a lot of work. <laughs> yes. Especially in silence, just in here, in our heads. Wow. So, so, so the Japanese person is really busy uh, behind their silence, um, trying to see where they fit within the stratus of the context that they're currently in, in, in this case, a, a meeting. Yes. And also, uh, uh, speaking of harmony, 
um, we are afraid of uh, same, saying something um, not aligned with the direction oh, of the meeting. Um, um, I'm guessing where is the meeting going and is, is what I am saying aligned with this or not? Yeah, I could see that. And it's curious, w wouldn't the, the, the meeting run a risk of that individual not even servicing or, or offering what they, what they think? Uh, because it might be contrary to the flow or the direction of the meeting. What, yeah, what I'm saying is just a stereotype. That's, that's where we started this conversation with. Uh, it depends on person and and of course uh, Japanese are changing and um, a lot more people can say no to the majority in any situation but uh, but what what I'm saying is just the traditional way of thinking and it's a kind of ghost we call uh, we uh, system coaches and process workers call <laughs> ghost and a visible influence in the field invisible influence in the field and that's the unconscious mindset yes of a Japanese person seeking to align themselves with the role that they are expected to perform at that moment yes and uh, another interesting can, can I tell please, something please. about that yes yes yeah yeah, another uh, unconscious mindset is uh, silence is gold. Mm -hmm. So we have a kind of edge to verbalize. Even just a question to your senior means you are challenging to him. So, um, uh, yeah, especially uh, before World War II, uh, young people cannot ask question to their seniors yeah, because once they ask a question, they will hit you. Dear. Yeah. Are you challenging me? Boom. <laughs> <laughs> what a way to learn. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, that, yeah, those kinds of uh, behavior is gone now mm -hmm. yeah, but I feel still what can I say an invisible influence is still there in our mind mm -hmm. I wonder how, how much how much power does a ghost have uh, let's let's imagine that I was a, a supervisor and I called a meeting and you were a subordinate and you you attended the meeting and I, as a supervisor, asked, it says, okay, um, even if anyone has any contrary opinions to mine, I need to hear them. I invite you and I want you to share whatever it is that is on your mind because I need to hear that. Would that plea be effective or not? Does the ghost have power over this situation? Yes, it does. And... Uh... Yeah, the first, the first thing which comes to you uh, in your mind is, should I say this or not in my role? Even though my boss is saying that, can I trust him or not? Okay. Okay, it might be a ploy. It might be, he might be trying to test me. <laughs> might be. So the, the typical phenomenon in that occasion is silence okay so so even after that invitation I might meet with a room full of silence yeah okay Wow now, of course if, if, if you have been a good boss and getting uh, respect and trust from your subordinates and they really feel it's safe people will talk so, but, sa so safety yeah. is important. Yeah, but in uh, uh, in a stereotyped 
situation, silence comes first. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so I would have to work very hard as a boss to gain your respect, to gain your trust. Uh, and also, um, another factor is uh, we are very reflective people. So uh, we need some more time to respond than Western people, I think. Mm -hmm. But we need time to think and organize our thinking before saying something. Okay. So it would be advisable for Western people to go in to the Japanese culture knowing that there's going to be time involved with exchanges. Yes, and another advice about this is give more space and time to Japanese people. Mm. Even though you feel it's too slow or uh, you might think, are they really listening? <laughs> but they are. Actually, they are. <laughs> more than we know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Japanese, most Japanese people are good listeners, I think. But <laughs> not, not splendid speakers, unfortunately. <laughs> wow, this is what a great insight you have given us today. Few, few. We're coming up to the end of the program, and okay. uh, I, it's traditional, it's tradition uh, for me to ask, uh, what is your message for humankind? And uh, so I'm going to ask you, and uh, unfortunately we don't have a lot of time for, for to wait. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Fushu, what is your message that you would like to deliver to humankind? to humankind wow that's a huge question I'm not sure if I I am answering your question but I'd like to say uh, although I said a lots of stereotyped things about Japanese culture and maybe about Western culture um, I don't mean to make a division between the two. My intention is to know the difference from each other and we can work it out together. So let's keep on working on it and enjoy living on this planet. Wow. That's it. Wow, what a message. To know the difference between each other so that we can work it out together. Pew Sato, thank you for joining Authenticity Radio today. Thank you. And this is Slade Suter. Until next time, be authentic, be true, listen and give people a chance to respond, and be free. There was an idea to bring together a group of remarkable people. Who are these people? Authenticity Radio. Stimulating and transparent. Real people and real authentic talk. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to get real. What are you prepared to do? Guys, I'm bringing the party to you. Slade Suter Live.